Um, I'm a geek. Uh, Bordeaux, Bordeaux is uh, is marked by um, marked out by these two rivers. You have the uh, Garonne here that comes out of the Pyrenees and goes uh, goes this way, and you have the Dordogne, which comes out of the Massif Central and flows uh, uh, east to west, and the confluence is here a little bit downriver from the city. But this the, the, the Garonne here especially marks out this area, which is geologically very different than this area. This is gravel um, that came down from the Pyrenees and is so profound, actually, and, in, and impressive that part of the country here is called gravel. It's, it's a, a grave. It's, a, it's, a, it's really, really impressive to see. And the gravel gets finer and finer as you go down river. Um, the rocks are smaller, and, and the blend in the soil includes more clay and sand as you're going down here. Eventually down here in the Medox, it's sand. You're on the beach. It's a shore. You're on the North Atlantic. So that's the, the left bank, what geeks call left bank Bordeaux, and dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon. And in the right bank, we typically talk about the right bank of the Dordogne River, and that includes very famous uh, places like Pomerol and saint Emilion, the wines, uh, those. And there, uh, um, the uh, soils are limestone uh, and clay limestone soils that um, encourage uh, uh, Merlot. So you have Merlot dominant wines in the right bank and Cabernet dominant wines in the left bank. That's the way wine geeks talk about Bordeaux. Um, but it is, but it is uh, uh, very interesting. The second wine that you'll taste here comes from uh, uh, this part of the right bank, Cote de Bourg. Cote de Bourg is if I use an analogy, uh, Cote de Bourg is like um, uh, Brooklyn to Manhattan. The, uh, the, the, the bankers, the giant banks and insurance companies that own uh, the, the very prestigious estates here, Chateau Margaux, Chateau Latour, Chateau Lafitte, and so on, um, uh, are dumping tons and tons of money into Cote de Bourg. And for good reason, because the vines are so interesting. In the past, it was sort of country bumpkin, a foreign country. You couldn't get there without uh, rowing uh, along. You could see it, but you know it was like foreigners. But it's one of the only places in Bordeaux where you, where you have um, old vines, and that, uh, for the reason I mentioned the, the freeze, why this is very unusual with 70-year-old Semillon. Uh, most of the vines are about in Bordeaux. Old vines are 50, maybe to 60 years old, 50 years old, and, and younger. And that was because everything froze in 1957 in February. February. Utter mass destruction of the vineyards. And, um, Just freeze or snow? I freeze. Just freeze. Uh, temperature not got rising above zero, you know, zero for uh, the month of February. People, people died. It was you know unprecedented historic event and an inflection point in, in Bordeaux, in modern Bordeaux, because of the wholesale replanting. But Cote de Bourg, which is a fascinating place, um, uh, we actually have three different producers in Cote d'Ivoire, and I and I love the wines. They're 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 very interesting. Um, is uh, was uh, some somewhat marginally uh, protected from the devastation of the frost of the freeze because of the confluence of the two rivers and the and the gradual slope down to the beginning of the Gironde here. For how, however it could be explained, many of the vines, um, many more of the vines survived. So today. Um, in Cote d'Ivoire, you have sort of a historical snapshot of the way Bordeaux was planted before the freeze, which is very interesting and includes, among other things, a whole lot more Malbec.